Hello, I'm Eric Ward. Uh, my firm is Ward Greenberg. We're located in Rochester, uh, Philadelphia, New Jersey. Um, today is August the 8th, uh, about five months since we've been away from our office working. Um, I've been asked to give a few comments about how that's worked and sort of what we've been doing during that period of time. Um, I think the, uh, the challenges have been the remote access, really, uh, and the lack of, of contact with, with my colleagues, you know, on a regular basis. Um, we have um, remote access, and we had that before the, uh, the COVID uh, pandemic began. Um, so it, it was not a difficult transition from a technical point of view, but rather it has been more from a personal point of view. Um, I was actually in the office yesterday and saw one of my partners for the first time since February. So um, those sorts of things have made the, the communication and um, the collegiality um, and just the, the, the um, cooperation among all the lawyers in the firm more difficult. You just have to take more time to be able to do those sorts of things. Now, I have a few notes here uh, because I've been asked to comment on a couple of questions, so I'm gonna have to look down at, at some of this. But um, I think that that um, one of the things that we've, we've now transitioned into is having our admins at least back in the office. And so there is a little bit more ability to kind of coordinate among people. Um, the practice, though, has been affected by this, and um, I, I think that's occurred in a number of ways. Uh, if, if nothing else, um, things have slowed down dramatically for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is that there's little court access. Um, as, a, as a practical matter, um, the absence of trial dates, for example, um, has had a, has had an impact on slowing things down. There's no urgency. Um, there has been, according to the courts, a general agreement that times will be extended. And as a result, uh, people have not been pushing cases much. Uh, there also has been an impact from the corporate side of things. We represent many uh, corporations in litigation. Um, I think the uncertainty is, has impacted uh, of the corporate outlook on litigation too. And in many cases, we've been asked not to do things um, simply because it's unknown what's gonna happen in the future. So from a conservative standpoint, um, our corporate clients, some of them are telling us, you know, don't push cases and just kind of go with the flow. Um, the other side of that coin, though, is with the absence of trial dates uh, and pushing trials, we've also been pretty successful in, in resolving a number of cases. I think this is because both sides uh, recognize that it could be months or years before we can get a case resolved if we wait for a trial. So that that has encouraged people to um, make efforts to complete and resolve cases. Um, you know, the, the questions I, I was asked whether there are any real life examples that, that I can give about, um, you know, sort of the day-to-day -day, uh, impact of this. And, you know, I think that there are some successes that have occurred here as well as some difficulties. Um, the courts are utilizing, you know, the, the Skype, the state courts at least, the Skype business um, um, platform. And that's actually been fairly successful. I've been involved in a number of um, conferences that have, have gone by um, Skype. And of course, everybody's done all the Zoom conferences. And in a way, those are easier in terms of the ability to, um, you know, you don't have to travel to go places. I've had a couple of appearances in Jefferson County, which is a couple hours away from here. Uh, when doing those by Skype, you save time. And I think as long as you know the lawyers that, that are, uh, you know, either on the other side or, or might be uh, on, on the same, uh, and the judge, 
uh, I think that those Skype conferences actually work pretty well. Um, the difficulty comes when you don't know the people that, that you're dealing with, and um, I think it's harder to judge reactions, and, and being remote uh, can have an impact on how you present your case. So uh, overall, though, I would say that this has been a general success. Um, I was in federal court, actually, just about a week ago uh, for the first time in court anywhere uh, since February. And um, it was interesting because, you know, the courts have changed the approach that they have. Uh, the judge was behind plexiglass, the court reporter was behind plexiglass, um, and uh, the lawyers all came in in masks. Now, during the presentation, we took the masks off, um, but the court made a big deal out of the fact that we had to be very careful to speak into the microphone because with the plexiglass up, um, the judge said he couldn't hear anything. So it was, uh, it was different from that respect, although, you know, I think that, that those are the sorts of things that we're going to need to get used to, and that's kind of the way things are going to work. Um, the, um, the, the challenges um, include moving cases along simply because it's a little bit more difficult now for people to commit to depositions. Remote depositions, and I've been involved in only one, do work, I think. Um, although they, they are challenging. I, I was talking with a lawyer who told me that in taking the deposition, he noticed remotely, he noticed that a witness kept looking down. And um, it turned out, according to this lawyer, that the attorney for the witness, who was, who was also remote and not present, was actually texting the witness answers to questions. Now, you know, that, that's the sort of thing that you wouldn't necessarily think about, but it is something that you have to be cognizant of when you're taking depositions remotely. I think it also is challenging because you need to get your documents set, lined up before the deposition and, and provide that both to the witness and uh, to opposing counsel. That can be viewed as a roadmap to what your deposition is going to look like, which does kind of change the approach that you might take in, in a deposition. So that there are challenges that we do have to overcome uh, in thinking about these things. Um, the, uh, the other or sort of the last question uh, that I've, I've uh, been asked is, you know, what, what would we like to see return? And, and I think that the answer to that is, oh, for the old days, where you have fairly robust um, uh, scheduling orders, we know that we're going to be having court appearances at certain times, that things aren't going to be regularly put off because of the inability to get together. And I, I think that that, that, that return would, would be good. But in the meantime, you know, things are beginning to pick up. I think people are much busier now. We're getting used to the idea of remote appearances. Uh, both in discovery and in court appearances. And um, with that, I think that there will be um, a, a continued understanding that there will be changes, but in general, the changes are workable and um, that we're, we have the ability to, to adapt to them. So uh, that's sort of my you know, five minute or 10 minute, I'm not sure how long thoughts about how things are going. And um, I, I hope that at some point when we look back at this, we'll sort of laugh and, um, and think, well, you know, that was, that was a changing point. So I thank you for listening. Um, and in closing, I do want to thank my um, lovely videographer, my wife, who has been holding the camera very steadily through this whole time. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to make these comments. Thank you.